Hello, and welcome to another edition of the Library Marketing Show. I'm your host, Angela Hirsch, the founder and curator of superlibrarymarketing.com, the website where you can get all kinds of tips to help make your life as a library marketer easier. Welcome. I'm coming to you from my house, from my daughter's personal bookshelf. Do you guys have a bookshelf like this in your house? I hope so. It's where we've kept all of the children's books and teen books that we thought were things that we wanted to pass on to our grandchildren. Uh, and I'm here today because I'm working from home. We're going to have a quick show. We're going to go through three things. First, I'm going to share a book review with you. Second, an email from one of my readers on superlibrarymarketing.com. And lastly, our kudos. Before we get started, I want to remind you to please like and subscribe to this channel and comment. Let me know if something that we're talking about resonates with you. Also, if you have an idea for a topic for a future library marketing show, please put it in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you have to say and what you want to talk about. Uh, I'm also wanted to let everybody know that we still have registration open for the Ohio Library Conference. It's actually here in Cincinnati in September at the end of this month. I'm gonna be giving a talk on email marketing for libraries. I would love to see you there. Registration is also still open for LMCC, the Library Marketing and Communications Conference in St. Louis. In November, I'm giving two talks there, one about doing new cardholder messaging through email and the other about social media for libraries. So please register, you can find those under upcoming events. Okay, let's get started. First, my book review. I know it's backwards. That's okay. This is called Unlearning God, How Unbelieving Helped Me Believe, and it's by Philip Gully, who is a Quaker pastor. He grew up Catholic. And I just wanted to share this book with you because there are a lot of people, myself included, who are in the middle of a faith struggle. And I think this book will help you. Um, Philip grew up Catholic, then he became a Quaker pastor, but he kind of just goes through all of the major tenets of Christian faith. And I found his insights to be really informative. And he basically is talking about things very eloquently that I have felt in my heart for a couple of years and have not been able to adequately express. So if you are um, interested, I actually have a much longer review on Goodreads. You can check it out there or you can just DM me hit me up in the comments. Let me know if you've read this book or if you're interested in it. Um, I wanted to share that with everyone because I know some people are out there on the struggle bus like I am in terms of religion. And this book was really helpful to me. So Unlearning God, How Unbelieving Helped Me Believe by Philip Gully is my book review for the week. Now we're going to head into our reader email and it comes to us from Tiffany Wilson, who is an employee at the Chattahoochee Valley Libraries. And she asked me, uh, we've added a multimedia production specialist position to our community engagement department. As expected, everyone is super excited about his skill set. What criteria have you established for video production? So I'm pretty um, excited for you, Tiffany, and congrats on your new position. I recently also just added a videographer to the library, so I'm, I totally understand what you're asking. What happens when you add a new position in marketing is that everyone seems to come out of the woodwork with ideas for that person and they want that person to help promote their uh, different stuff. So we're kind of uh, working our way through this at my library, but what we're doing is actually we've created a form which we put on our inter-office website and the form asks for people's ideas for marketing promotions in general and it asks a couple of questions. Um, it asks people to please describe how their promotional idea ties into our library's overall strategy. You know, that's a big deal to me. I try to do as much promotion to support the library's overall strategy as possible. And um, so we ask people how that ties in because we want them to start thinking in that way and not just think that we're going to promote things willy nilly. It also asks them if there are any visuals for this particular promotional idea. So in other words, is there something for us to go get video of? Is there someone who would be willing to talk about this particular thing on camera? And what the form actually does is help us to decide how to promote things. So it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to shoot a video on that particular item. We may look at the answers to the question from the staff member and decide that that particular promotional item is better as a social media post or in our library news magazine, uh, which is called Library Links, 
or as a social media post. Did I already say that? I don't know. And on the website, uh, we might decide to use it in a number of ways that are not video related, or somebody may send us an idea that they don't think is video related, but that actually is. And as professionals in the marketing department, we're able to figure that out. So that's what that form is going to help us to do. It's going to help us to <laughs> figure out what things we should be shooting and not shooting. I don't know if you're a new person, how they feel about scheduling their own shoots, if they're handling scheduling their own shoots or if you are doing it for them. I'm lucky my videographer handles his schedule. He just comes to me every day and tells me what he's doing and what's on his plate. He keeps me very well informed about what he's shooting and not. Um, we have taken the step of letting our staff know a week ahead of time before we release a video to the public. And that's twofold. That's so if uh, a customer has a question after seeing the video and they come into a library location, that the staff members know that that video exists, where that person is getting that question from and can refer them to the right thing or place or answer that question properly. The other thing I want is for them to start sharing those videos on their own social platform. So I want to let them know that it's coming out. Um, and then of course we have for our videographer, we have things that come down from senior leadership that he just has to do because those are their priorities for administration. So we have to work those into the schedule. So there are a lot of stakeholders and I think that happens anytime you add someone to your staff, whether it's a social media person, whether it's somebody handling your press releases, whether you start doing email marketing, you're going to get a bunch of requests from people to promote things and it's a learning process and you're just going to have to know that for the next couple of months you're going to it'll be a little bumpy until you figure out what the boundaries are for those so a form on your inner office uh, website and like some specific boundaries about what who decides what gets shot and what videos are released which i think this should be you in the marketing department those are going to be helpful thank you for that question tiffany i hope that answered it uh, I'll be writing more about videography on the blog, superlibrarymarketing.com in the future after I get some experience working with my new videographer. Uh, finally, today I want to give some kudos. And this goes to the Brantford Library in Brantford, which is in Ontario, Canada. And they had a thing that happened, I think it was about a week and a half ago, where somebody threw a couple of rocks through their main library window. And I think it would be really easy to react to that in anger or to not talk about it, to just fix it, um, or to just get bitter about that kind of um, vandalism. But Brantford did this thing on Twitter. They had a tweet that I just thought was kind and hopeful. And I'm looking for examples of those things, kindness and hopefulness in the world, because there seems to be not as much as there was, or <laughs> we need more kindness and hopefulness. So Brantford did that with their tweet. Um, they wrote, uh, they had a photo of the rock, the damage, and they said, sometimes nasty things happen. You get rain on your wedding day, spill coffee on your best shirt, or someone throws rocks through your front windows. Our main branch is still open and one small act won't stop us from providing the best library service ever. I just thought that was an amazing tweet and I wanted to give them some kudos for handling that in the way that they did. Okay, that's our show for this week. Again, like, subscribe, and comment if something that we said today resonated with you or if you have a specific question, please go to superlibrarymarketing.com. You can also uh, submit a question to be answered during the next edition of the Library Marketing Show, and I'll see you next week. Thank you.